We are here this morning at the Surfside, Kolel Boker. Um, we pulled up something really interesting. It comes from sephorimblog.com. Um, it's a famous Baal Noda Biuda Rabbi Yeheskel Landau. Um, you know, over here, David, Shauli, I told you when we're learning, we're just presenting the Mamre Hazal, we're learning them inside, um, presenting multiple uh, arguments. Sometimes they conflict with each other, sometimes there's arguments that we thought we knew, we looked up in the book and they weren't even there. Sometimes there were new arguments. Today we're going to learn something about the Nuda Bihuda, um, about old texts, texts of the Zohar, texts of Kitve Ha'ari, um, the veracity, uh, the legitimacy of these texts, and the Nuda Bihuda's opinion about them. Let's begin. Chaf Gimel. Zelo Yachishu. Kol Ba'alei Hazor U Ba'alei Kitve Ha'ari. He says the Zohar wasn't a uh, was no masoret, no masoret uh, in, in the Jewish nation. Dor achar dor, ish me pi ish, generation after generation, man to man. This is well known even amongst those that study the Zohar well enough to know the history of uh, Rabbi Moshe de Leon. Uh, Rav Arya Kaplan uh, in his book, uh, meditation and the Kabbalah has a whole chapter dedicated to this in detail. When I read it the first time, I was like super interested in how that even happened. That whole event of the Zohar, how it came to light. Uh, I'm a big reader of the Zohar, learner of the Zohar, and things like that. But you it know, seems like the Rove didn't agree with the note of view then, in that sense. I mean, yeah. the, Grah, the Grah was a bit avid, avid fan of the Zohar, even wrote many things. Yeah, the Gama Vilna. The, the Grah was the Gama yeah, so it seems this is, this is an opinion of the Nuda Bihudan. That's what we're learning it. Whether or not uh, you know uh, it's being followed, that's something else. Note that though, the Ramchal was there. I'm saying the big. Yeah, the Gaon Mavil, not Ramchal. By the way, all the Sfaradim greats. Yeah, everybody. Everybody, and so amongst the Sfaradim, that was it's Kodesh Kodashim. There's a new movement today called the Rationalist Movement that they're trying to downplay the Zohar by. I find that hard. The Rationalist to Movement. They're trying to downplay the Zohar. Really, where then? Israel here? I'm saying yeah, you know, like the. Uh, the huh? These guys, they come, they're making new stuff, they're, they're trying to battle wages, uh, to make new, uh, battle, uh, you know, wars, uh, things like that. It's crazy. But, um, no, amongst the it was always Kodesh Kodashim. But it is important to note that Rashid didn't have access to the Zohar, um, neither did many of the Rishonim prior to the printing of the Zohar. It's not quoted in, in text. And, I mean, uh, Rabbi Baal Wine, who I was fortunate to meet in New York, I remember when he came to speak in the shul, and I mentioned to one of the rabbis in the shul, I'm like, don't ask him to speak about the Zohar, because he's a very opinionated individual on it, and he, his opinion is uh, no, no, no. So he ended up speaking about the Techedet, so it worked out fine. But, uh, you know, they say a good speaker knows, knows their audience. Okay, so he says here, so he's telling you that all these farim that were from around the same time of Rishbi, we have a good lineage uh, and masoret. Until the actual, the actual Talmud came. Uh, Knesset Hagedola, and he's talking about Anshe Knesset Hagedola, Mipia Nevi'im from the prophets, Ish Mipi Ish, Ad Moshe Mipia Gevura. It's unbelievable. It goes out. Umayata Nidon, Nidon, Im Kama Shemikubal Beyadenu Amru Klal Gadol. Kol Braita de Lo Matnitin, Be Rabbi Haya, Rabbi Oshaya, Lo Motvinan Mine, Hadeshe Hashesu Shalonim Letu Mina Taut Vashibush. So he's questioning, how can you have all these writings that were so many years after Rishbi? Rishbi And Rishbi is not even signed off on it. It's well known that Rishbi didn't write the Zohar, even according to Sfaradim. It was written, I think it was Rabbi Abba. Who put, who put it together, the Adra, the Adra Zuta, it wasn't even, it's kind of like Tana Devei Eliyahu, uh, the book of Eliyahu Nabi it was never written by Eliyahu, and I remember why once some, one time someone quoted it, I was like, he didn't write it, I'm like, it's on page one, Rav Anan, his, his student wrote it, and so it's important to say that because a lot of these individuals had other students who wrote sometimes conflicting things on, 
on other students' writings. How do we know that there wasn't any problem? That's well known. That Kivei Arivi was not written by the Ari. The Ari didn't write anything. He didn't encourage writing. He only wrote what a song. He wrote a pizmonim. He wrote something on the tefilot. He wrote he wrote a couple of small things, but no svarim. At least we don't have any. We should say because maybe he did. Whoa! He's doubling down over here that Maharchu didn't write those svarim either. Rak becholio. Uh, he says, wow. He says that Maharhu also didn't write Kitvari. He got sick. A lot of the writings were taken from him. They got copied over. And it could be a lot of uh, issues in their writings. This is important why a lot of the Kavanot have to be checked amongst the other Mikubalima. We do that all the time. Whenever someone quotes a Shara Kavanot, I always look up what are the other students of the, of the Arizal wrote. I think he had 10 students. Uh, we should do that one day. Just talk about who were the 10 students, because some of them lived before, Mah- before Maharhu, some lived, uh, some lived during the Ari in that time. They, they all had different Sfarim and different writings. Uh, so it could be good. We can go into that. So that's today's writing on the Noda Behuda. Uh, it's opinion on the Kitve uh, Adi, on the Zohar, and on some of the writings that don't have Mesorit. And uh, Tzfaradim obviously didn't subscribe to this, but that was uh, his opinion. So it's good to learn it. Baruch Adonai, Amen, Amen.